So hi and welcome everybody to the course of Introduction to Communication Systems. And this course is basically about teaching you the concept of transmitting your signals over a long distance to your intended receiver who's expected to be able and capable of recovering your message. So before that, let's talk about the word communication. When we say communicate, communicate means you have a message and you try to send it to the other party so, and you want that party to understand you very well. The way we communicate with each other, the basic communication, is by talking. Yes, you speak and your friend hears you and when he understands your message, reply you pack. When do, you, when, when do we say that your friend understands your message? What are the conditions for your friend to understand your message? Same language, your voice is clear, not low, yes, and you are close to him. Now what happens to your friend when he moves a little bit far from you? What do you do? You have the same language, he can still understand you, but the voice level reduces. Your friends go all far from you by one kilometer, not 100 meter. You try to increase your voice, shout, scream, he's not hearing you anymore. Yes, you are talking, sending messages, but he's not hearing you anymore. Why? Why is not hearing you? You are talking the same language. The power of your voice is not enough to reach your friend after one, one kilometer. So this is a problem. Yes, this is a problem. How to solve it? How to solve it? Give me a solution for this problem. You don't know telephone. We are trying to understand communication. How, how things came. You, the first is to amplify your voice louder. Yes, yes. Use amplifier to increase the volume of your, to increase the level of your voice. Yes. When you increase the volume or the amplitude and power of your voice, what happens? You want to talk to your friend who's one kilometer far from you, but everybody hears your voice. Why are you annoying us? Yes, you want to talk to your friend, only one. Everybody is getting this, everybody is, I want to make sure that you get the logic behind communication. Why do we need communication? Yes, the, this is a solution, you increase the power, but all the people who are in the range of one kilometer away from you will hear your message. What's the problem? You annoy others. The others will say, uh, you annoyed us. We don't want to listen and hear you every time you want to talk to your friend. And the other, the other problem, your friend will be angry with you. He will say, whatever you say to me, everybody hears it. No privacy, no security. So isn't it a problem? It's a very big problem in communication. So what do we do? Give me a solution. I want to talk to my friend who's far away from me, yes, far away from me, and nobody hears what I'm saying to him. Just he hears his own message. Okay, they said, what's the frequency of the voice? The frequency of the voice from, from, 0 to 3.4 kilohertz. Yes, this is the spectrum. The frequency, what's the frequency? The number of oscillations you have within a certain duration. Yes, the number of occurrence within a certain duration. Yes, this is frequency. How many times this happens within this time? Yes, how many? See, number over duration. Yes, this is frequency basically. 
So everything in life is related to frequency in a way or another. So frequency is coming from energy. Yes? So when you talk, when you speak, you generate basically waves. These waves are, we call them speech signals, and they occupy certain bandwidth from zero, the bandwidth, the range of frequency, from zero to 3.4 kilohertz. Now, your ear can hear up to 20 kilohertz, the audio, the video, this. You understand me? Your ear, anything beyond that, you don't hear it. Anything above 20 kilohertz, you don't hear it. So what do I now think with me? If after 20 kilohertz, I don't hear anything, this means that I can shift my signal to a higher frequency and nobody around when I send my signal will hear that signal. Isn't it logical? Nobody, because it's not within the range of your hearing capability. Your ear will not hear it, yes? So, but how am I gonna allow only my friend to receive my message? Filter, exactly. You, you say to your friend, I'm gonna talk on this frequency, which is very high, and are, are within this band, like you give him one kilohertz or two kilohertz around this band, and you tell him, you use your filter, to synchronize to this band, this is only for you. And who coordinates this? The network. The network. Yes? So, okay, that seems to be a very nice solution to our communication problem. But how do we do that? Which frequency to use? You have a voice signal and you want to transmit it, let's say over the air. How, how do you transmit this? Your voice signal as is, like as you can see here, you have a transmitter and you want to transmit it to the receiver over a channel. Your voice signal as is doesn't propagate over the air for large, for large distances because I told you the problem with the, with the low frequencies. Yes, you need has limited range and everybody hears you if it is below 20 kilohertz yes so i want to go to higher frequency when you go to higher frequency you need to determine which frequency you need to communicate over yes and let's say you said i'm gonna communicate over 100 mega megahertz 100 megahertz you need to design the antenna in such a way that it it works well. At 100 megahertz, you need a very large, large, large antenna. So it's impractical to build this large antenna. Let's say 30 meter. With, because the length of the antenna is lambda over 4 from the signal or the frequency you are trying to send. So I need to go to a frequency where my antenna size is small. My receiver can detect it easily. I can carry a receiver like this and put it in my pocket. I don't want to have an antenna of 30 meter. So that's why we move to a frequency that has length shorter than 30 centimeter. So that lambda over four becomes eight centimeter. Eight centimeter, you can put it in a phone. Now, you know the reason for communication and why, but how to do that? To do that, we need to perform modulation. Modulation is the process of converting, sending your message signal by changing the properties and feature of a sinusoidal signal. And this sinusoidal signal has to work on a very high frequency, like 900 megahertz, so that it sends your data 
accurate, uh, reliably, and within practical situations. So what's the structure of the transmitter and receiver? So in general, in general, although we will study mainly and focus on analog communication in this course, we will give you a big picture of how communication works in real life. You have your computer or your phone or what, laptop or whatever. At the end of the day, everybody knows that you have bits. All the packets, all the data you generate, you convert them to bits, yes? These bits, we convert, map them to symbols. Symbols, basically, they map the bits, they map the bits into complex numbers which you can draw in the two dimension. Two dim you, you know that two dimension, when you draw a figure in calculus, you have X and Y axis. So when I tell you, for example, draw, uh, determine where is the complex number located within the 2D, what do you do? You take the real value and the imaginary value. The real value is the X axis and the imaginary value is the Y axis and you draw an arrow from the origin to the point. So this is how you determine complex numbers. So basically, here we map the bits to complex number. This complex number rep represents the data symbols that you want to transmit. And then you encode them. Why do you? You encode them to protect them from the channel effects and then you go to the digital to analog communication up until now you have you have digital digital data here because you are dealing with bits but to to send over the channel you need to you need to convert it to analog what's the difference between digital and analog we will explain it later in details but basically if you want to take it simply you can say analog means you have continuous infinity number of values in the x-axis and y-axis give me an example any function in calculus all of them they are continuous some of the function they were discontinuous you can you cannot find their derivative and the discrete or digital they are they are quantized sampled in time and quantized in amplitude. Time here represents the x-axis, amplitude represents the y-axis. And then, then you have a mixer. Why do we need a mixer? To make sure that our signal can be transmitted at a very high frequency. Yes, because you're, you don't want your message to be heard by everybody and you want your message to be compatible with the practical design of the antenna. Yes, you need to be able to transmit it from a practical antenna, antenna of length in centimeter, not in meters. Yes, because you need to carry this receiver with you. And then you have filters to determine the band you want to talk over it and eliminate the interference, and you have amplifier to amplify the power of your signal. The more power your signal has, the farther it can reach, yes? Like when you talk in lower voice, hardly your friend can hear you, but when you talk in louder, high volume, your friends 10 meters away or 100 meters away from you can hear you clearly. And you have an antenna, the antenna we were talking about, which is, which should be, uh, lambda over 4 length so that you transmit your message your signal from it clearly and you send your message over the channel and the channel can affect your signal can add noise fading fluctuation it's the channel this is the channel the environment the air your signal hits by the tree reflects back hits the door it come to you and all these are impairments, drawbacks to the channel, yes? And you need to, at the receiver, you need to remove these effects to be able to see your channel, to be able to see your message data. 
because if it, the channel is added to your data. So when you receive it, you don't recognize your data. You don't know what's the data. But to be able to receive your data, you need to get rid of the effect of the channel. Remove the effect of the channel by what doing mechanism. The, process, the receiver has to be intelligent enough to perform equalization, reconciliation, synchronization, all these complex processing in order to remove the effect of the channel and get your message clear. You have then here filters to sync adjust the receiver to the band that the transmitter is sending over. Amplifier, after the amplifier you have another filter to remove the interference and you after that you have another mixer, local oscillator. Why do I need that? To move back to low frequency, to the region in which my signal is residing. Yes, my message, my voice is at 3.4 kilohertz. So when you multiply again your received signal with an oscillator that has the same frequency as the one used at the transmitter, you are able to get your message back to the domain of voice signal. And then you convert it from analog to digital so that you process it by computer and by phones and this. And then you finally receive your message or voice or video or picture or whatever. So basically this is rough explanation of what communication systems are. The transmitter, the receiver and the channel effect on your message. So Having explained the basic picture of communication system and why do we need communication system, the most important thing, why do we need it? I explained exactly how the logic behind that. Now, we will start learning the how. How to do that, how to modulate, how to process, how to analyze. Yes, because now you want things to work. So basically, we'll give you we'll continue with this introduction and after that we'll, in the course we'll give you a quick overview about signal and systems because they are basically the prerequisite for communication everybody talk signal and system yes so basically we'll review signal and system quickly and be and try to use them in the remaining classes because they are very important concepts that we usually need to use frequently whenever we explain a new modulation scheme. And then we, we start studying modulation, which is the most, fundamental, found, the most fundamental concept in communication. Modulation, what's modulation, how to do modulation, and basically we'll, we'll talk about amplitude modulation, AM, and single sideband, vestigial sideband, and single sideband. And then we'll talk about angle modulation, including frequency modulation, phase modulation, and then about pulse modulation, pulse amplitude modulation, pulse width modulation, pulse position modulation, pulse shape modulation, and all these different types of modulation. Basically, they are different way of conveying your message, different way of conveying your message that have that have different features and dif different merits and demerits. How do you de determine which one should you use? You determine based on the requirement of your application and the requirement of your customer. You go and ask your customer, what's your application? What do you care about the most? And based on that, you design and you decide which modulation you are going to use. So as a communication engineer, you have to, to, to know how to do this modulation, what are the merits and demerits of each modulation, and how to map them to applications. For example, if you have TV station that wants to talk to the satellite, which modulation is more suitable? If you are talking wirelessly, like wireless cellular phone, which modulation will suit your case? If you have an application that talks to a drone flying in the sky, which modulation would you use? If you have an Internet of Things device that you want to put it for 10 years, 
you don't power it it's running on battery which modulation you would use you understand me you become like the company in the future can ask you since you took communication and you are expert in wireless can you please tell us which modulation should we use for this case okay you analyze the case this case this requires this 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 then it's probably i should use uh, bbsk it's the best modulation to that meet that meets the requirement of your application you, your use case basically and after we explain these different types of modulation and understand them mathematically and by drawing and how to do them and map them to their applications, we will talk about sampling and quantization, which are very important concepts as well, because nowadays we are living in a digital world. We don't deal with analog signal usually. Any analog signal, you must convert it to digital. And it also, if you want to see your data back, you want to convert it to analog again. So basically, you will learn sampling and quantization. And these are very important concepts. And from that, we can move to pulse code modulation. And then basically give you a basic introduction on digital modulation, line codes, and inter-symbol interference. So basically, this is the overall structure of the course and what we are co going to cover and going back to the history of communication yeah we started in the, the real communication that starts using frequency and modulation and this and that it started in 1830 with the telegraph then some other versions of it then we came up with the telephone alexander graham Graham Bell and and then wireless telegraphy in 1895 and then radio wireless radio this was breakthrough when you were able to transmit your signal over the air so it's really one of the amazing inventions at that time and at that time communication system before before these technologies appeared we had to, if your friend is very, very far from you, what do you do? I mean, by sign language, yes? He cannot hear you, but he can see you, yes? Like the police, how, the, how does the police talk to the people usually? By sign language, yes? Because uh, they are inside the cars, closing, and they are far away a little bit. So before the car reaches, they know the sign of the police, they understand it from the police what, what to do, what to go. Yes, sign language. So it's by seeing. And today's communication is wireless, telephony, uh, pro TV broadcasting, and internet, wireless, wa wireless LAN, and 5G, 4G, 2G, 3G, all these communication systems. We have the public switch telephone network, which is actually the network provided by Turk Telecom, the terrestrial network. This network, basically, when it appeared, when people started using it in the old days, it was for voice. And it was amazing. Everybody, for the first time ever, people are able to talk with each other by voice. But as to technology, advance like voice is now worthless yes anybody is using his phone these day telephone at home to talk to anybody nobody is using it the only reason why you are still using the Turk telecom sir because they are providing you internet from the underground uh, cables yes nobody it's a dead technology it used to be one of the amazing and fabulous technology before let's say 30 years ago but now nobody's using the telephone at home at home i'm saying yes your telephone the one you take from Turk telecom nobody's using it for voice what do you use it for just to get the internet so basically voice is no longer a worthy service yes i mean no, now with the 
your voice is data becoming with the applications and messengers and this and that, all of them, you, for, you are using applications to talk, chat, video calls, even conferences and this and that. So this is basically did public switching telephony network for voice, fax and this, it's dead service. Nobody is using it anymore. Radio and TV broadcasting, now we have the digital broadcasting. Ham radio wave, AM and FM. Anybody listens these days to AM? Nobody. Anybody listens to FM? Maybe from the car or this, but beside the car you don't. And especially with the internet, there are websites or this where it enables you to listen to any FM in the world while you are here. Like you can listen to FM of USA, of Australia, of Europe while you are here. It, it, because it's provided to you via the internet. FM is limited, is regional, limited by the coverage, but with the internet you can listen to any FM radio in the world. You know this, yes? You don't know, haven't you tried to listen one time to an FM in USA, for example, in California, in New York, what the people there are talking and saying? It's possible. It's possible. I can, uh, you can find websites on Google that provide you this service. But what I'm saying, people are, people requirements are changing. And people are no longer using the old services. They are using the new services. And this is the this is nature uh, of the of any technology that appears and dies after a while, but dies because of the appearance of new technologies that overcome it. So we have the satellite systems. Still, we have them. We have the cable television, the cellular phones, the Bluetooth, the GPS, and many others. All these are examples of communication systems. This is the public switching telephone network, very basic concept. You have the telephones here and your local switching office. Local switching office is switching. You want to call, he puts your cable, connect you with the person. There was in the old day guy, uh, workers responsible for doing that, but nowadays it's automated. And it, it was using circuit switch not packet switching. There is a difference between packet switching and circuit switching. Circuit switching, you reserve the resources. You want to talk, you, they give you a cable and you, nobody is allowed to use it while you are talking. But with the internet, you don't have a, a dedicated cable for you. You just send your data, your data randomly uh, is sent over the internet and mixed with the other data generated by other users and the receiver can know this packet for you or not, based on sequence, numbers, IP, MAC address, this and that. So, so everybody is sharing the network actually, is more efficient. And you have the cellular system, basically the cellular systems, the, our phones are part of the cellular system. The company like Turkcell, Turk Telecom, they divide the geographical area here, for example, Antalya to cells, cells areas and in each cell they install tower yes space station and this space station basically is responsible for covering you with the service of Tur Turk Telecom or Turk Cell or Vodafone whatever and as long as you are within this region if someone calls you you can reply him back your phone will ring and you can reply him back so basically here you buy frequencies from the government and if you don't know the most expensive commodity in wireless communication is frequency to buy the air frequency to be allowed to transmit over this frequency this is very expensive more expensive than anything you can think of it's like in million and billion, million and billion of dollars buying frequency, just band of frequencies that Turks Telecom can use it for serving the customers. 
this is really from where it buys it from the government so basically everybody is fighting to take more bandwidth because if you take more bandwidth you can serve more users earn more money yes but the bandwidth that the government assigns usually to the companies is very little so if you divide it let's say the bandwidth is 2 megahertz the government can give any company 2 megahertz and if you divide it uh, let's say each user takes 1 kilohertz yes 1 mega over 1 kilo you have you can serve 1000 customer only but you have million of customers yeah yes there are 25 millions or more using cellular phones in turkey yes how can you serve them and in all these geographical areas, Antalya, Istanbul, Adana, Izmir, this, this, yes, how can you serve all of these users? You divide your network into cells, like you see here, yes? And you divide your frequency, the frequency you got from the government into three bands, let's say, one from zero, from two to 2.3, 2 2.3 to 2.6, 2.6 to three. This is the one mega you got from the government. And each color represents a band frequency. This frequency one, frequency two, frequency three. And you serve over for, with this frequency, you serve 500, 300 user, this 300, this 300. Now these different colors, they don't interfere with each other. Now, but the signal coming from this region at the, to, to this point, now, you, you send your signal in an omnidirectional way, in all the direction, yes? But as you know, the signal, as it travels, it decays. Its power decreases. Now, when you put another cell that's using the same frequency after 100 kilometer, your signal that you receive from this cell becomes nothing. Means there is no interference. You can repeat using this frequency again to serve more customers. So you put you, you, the frequency used here, you use it again in another geographical area. By doing so, you can cover the whole area with little bandwidth. This is the trick they use to cover because one mega only suffice for 1,000 users. How come? But I want to, I want to serve million. So you use this trick. You reuse your frequencies in different geographical areas where the interference is very little, extremely little. Why the interference? The interference, I mean, the, if you are transmitting two signals with the same frequency, they interfere with each other. Yes, because they are on the same frequency, they come on top of each other. You don't understand. You don't understand your own signal because you receive the combination of them, but you want your own signal. This we call it interference. Yes, we want to avoid it. If you can avoid it, you can keep reusing the frequency over and over and over to serve more customers. We have, uh, this is what we call it co-channel interference between same color cells. The cells with the same color, we call it co-channel interference. If frequencies, time slots, chords are reused at specially separated location. And uh, we have also handoff and control coordinated coordination through cell base stations. What, what's handoff? Handoff when you are in a car and moving with 50 km per hour and you cross the region from here to here. What will happen to your connection? It's supposed to be disconnected but no before you move the cell the tower knows ahead of the time that you are moving with this speed and you are going to get out of this cell it hands off it tells the other base station look there is a guy who's gonna enter your region please prepare your service prepare the resources to serve him i'm gonna handle everything to you take care of him so before he moves quickly jumps to the other cell and the other cell starts serving him. So you never feel you are disconnected while you are driving a car in the past, talking, talking to the people. You are crossing regions like this, but your call is 
continuing, not disconnected at all. The reason for that is the network is designed in a clever way to serve the users, although while they are moving with very high speed in their cars. Uh, this is the axis, this is the, the backbone. <clears throat> so you have here your, your, you are here inside a car talking to the base station, the base station serving you, but at the end of the day, the base station is connected via cables, fiber cables to the center, mobile switching center that determines uh, where to forward your call and how to forward the traffic and find your location, the location of your receiver and move the signal. So basically when you move to the fiber optics and this, you have the internet backbone. Uh, how do you think the countries are connected with each other? Now you can uh, access a server in USA, yes? Access data in Europe, access data in Australia. How do you think we are connected with each other? Any idea? Fiber optics cable in the sea, in the ocean. They are connecting the continent, the countries with each other. If you cut this cable, the communication, the internet between this country and that country stops. Imagine, this is how the network it is. And it's protected, of course, and people and this. Like when you build a pipeline to send petrol or oil or gas. The fiber optics, like it's the main connection. They are very fast, high speed, and large bandwidth. They can connect people with each other. <clears throat> and this is the local area network. If you establish a network like in the computer lab, yes, when you go to the computer lab, the computers are connected with each other making a local network. This network is not connected to the internet. You can disconnect it from the internet, but still you can talk to, the computers can talk to each other. Local means every computer can hear every other computer. Packet switching instead of circuit switching. You don't, no dedicated channels. I, data is broken down into packets and these packets are sent uh, immediately after you you receive your data and we call this the Ethernet protocol usually and we have the wireless version of it the wireless uh, when you have Wi-Fi access point and you are talking to it yes you are not the only one who's served by the access point you have also many other users who's, who are using it so you try to compete with them and they try to access the service by provided by the Wi-Fi. Suppose you you are two, three, four, five. It's okay. The Wi-Fi can serve you. But if you become hundred, and all of you wants to access the internet from, you will feel that it's not. Sometimes it disconnects. It's not serving you. The data rate is low. Have you felt this one time? You try to connect the Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi does not connect your phone somehow when you when there is a huge traffic and many users want to access the network what happens their packets clashes with each other like your your schedule when it overlaps it's the same packets overlaps with each other if they overlap becomes interference if there is interference you, can, you cannot get your message, the receiver cannot receive your message reliably. So you need to be careful of that. Basically, you need to retry again and again and send it at a different time. Channel access is shared, random access. Access protocol are much more complex than LAN, of course, because it's wireless. Backbone Internet to provide best effort service. QoS, we call it quality of service quality of service. You will try to meet the quality of service requirements. And this is, this is the internet. This is the big, 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 big network that nobody controls. You have starting from your computer, millions of computer, host, the servers, the backbone, the ISP, Torque Telecom, Torque Cell, Huawei, Ericsson, 
uh, Vodafone, Glo. All these companies are building their networks and this and that, and then you have the web farm, web servers, data, Google server, cloud computing, all these things. Very complex, the internet. Have you ever tried to ask Google how the internet works? So here I put a link for you to just on YouTube or in Google. You can put this question, how does the internet work? Exactly, from the point where you type something in Google, where does it go? How? Basically, let me explain to you quickly and you go and watch that video on the internet. When you access a website on the internet, what happens? The website name, let's say google.com or youtube.com. Its name, it just go to a DNS server. DNS server says the user wants to access google.com. What's uh, I don't know who's google.com. I, I I understand only IBs. Can could you please give me the IB? The DNS server has mapping mapping table. Like the phone the phone uh, your contact, your phone contacts. Uh, when you have like this guy, your friend has this number, this friend has this, this number. The same with the DNS server. This website with this name has this IP address. Then the DNS server returns the IP address to your browser. Uh, your browser sends to the, uh, try to connect with the IP address. The IP address go, takes you to the server where your website or where the website is hosted. And then you access the file, it brings you the file and return back to deliver to you the content. So it's like such a journey that you don't feel it sometimes. It happens within seconds. But many, many requests, money mapping, many functions are going on, but you don't see them. They are from the back end. So you have the satellite systems as well. You have the ground station, the satellite and the receiver and this and that. And one might ask, why don't we use satellite for the internet connection instead of building and establishing, installing cables in the oceans? For two reasons. The first reason, delay, you know, geo, geo orbit, it's around 39, 39,000 kilometer above us and Leo is around 2,000 kilometer. So with this distance, your signal is gonna take too much time to reach up and down. So it causes too much delay delay that you cannot afford, you don't like it. Like you, you ask for the web browser, you ask for youtube.com and you wait two minutes. You don't like this to happen, yes? It's not good. And also, with your phone, you cannot talk to the satellite. Why? Because the antenna, the antenna is so small. Yes? To be able to communicate over very large, large, large distances, you need to go over high frequency and more power. High, higher, so it's not suitable to be used with uplink and downlink for communication with satellite systems. Basically, what, why do we use dishes to receive TV stations? Why do we use dishes, do you know? Or is where is the antenna? You think the antenna is the dish? This big, this big one you bought in, to, on the roof of your home. It's not that one, the antenna. The antenna is this one in the middle, in the center. But you have all this area in order to collect energy and focus it on the antenna. So with the phone, can you do this? You need big dish to be always carrying it with you. <laughs> To, to collect energy and focus it on your phone, it doesn't make sense. That's why you are not using satellite systems for providing internet. However, there are companies like uh, Tesla, I don't know, Elon Musk, they are thinking of providing, and Facebook, they are thinking of providing you internet from, 
from drones. Drones they, that are not far away from the ground, like let's say one, one kilometer, two kilometer. It's like base station, base station, but on the air, flying on the air. Instead of having a ground base station, this, since it's close to the ground, and it can reach the receiver easily, and the receiver can talk to it easily, you don't need these big dishes, and you don't have too much delay. It's more practical. So you have the Bluetooth service, which was produced by Ericsson in 1994. And then it's basically the main use of uh, Bluetooth. In the old days, if you want to send to your friend anything, you need to you need to use a cable. Yes, if you have data, if you have data and you want to transfer it to your computer, you usually use a cable. So what if you don't have a cable? They invented the Bluetooth so that you can transfer your data without cable, but for short distances, like 10 meters, 30 meters maximum. Yes, and the data rate is low. So the, these are... <clears throat> The previous one are basically <coughs> not that new. Everybody knows them. <coughs> but with the advancement in technology, in today's communication, we have new services and the new emerging concepts. Like what we call, we are moving from the internet of people, where people are communicating over the internet, to the internet of things, where things and objects are communicating over the internet. So. And the Internet of Things can be classified into Massive Internet of Things or Critical Internet of Things. Massive Internet of Things when you have thousands, millions of devices are communicating with the network. Sensors, placing them here, meters, this, all these objects. Who do you think has larger number, the people or the objects? The number of objects more, far more than the people. So, the number of devices that are going to be connected to the network in the future by objects is far more than the people. So the internet has to be also considering this fact. That's why you have the, your coffee machine, your whatever microwave, plant, plugs, traffic lights, AC, all of them are connected to the internet. Even you can connect chair and the plants. So basically, you need to, to do that, you need to use micro uh, wireless chip that connects to the internet and microcontroller to control the functionality you need to take when you receive an action or you want to send a sensing message. So the number of internet of growth, we are in 2000 here, almost 20. We are, see how it was before a few years, the number of devices connected to the internet and the devices nowadays. So it's rapidly growing, exponentially growth. And these devices are used for at home, in transportation, in health care, in buildings, infrastructure, and in city, the smart city concepts. And we we classify them into five regions based on the data rate and number of users. And each region has certain requirements that we can map them. So basically, you use these Internet of Things devices in areas like smart cities to build smart cities, smart homes, smart metering, utility metering, wireless and fitness, remote sensors and actuators in agriculture, object tracking. So these are different applications, different applications with different requirements. Some of them you need power efficiency. For some others, you need lower complexity. And for some other application, you need to offer long range communication. So for power efficient communication, you need your battery to run for a long period of time, like 10 years. Can you design a modulation scheme that can meet this requirement? Lower complexity, 
you don't need to use complex encryption, complex transmission and reception. You need to make your things as simple as possible. Longer range, you need your signal to go for 100 kilometers to cover. This is used for tracking. So as you can see, different requirements. Different requirements require different technologies. We have the enhanced mobile broadband communication, 3D UHD video tele, telepresence, tactile internet, ultra high definition video streaming, video gaming, virtual reality, extended reality. I think you heard about them and we need to meet these requirements. These are future applications. How can we meet them by understanding and learning communication and trying to understand the concepts behind the techniques that are capable of meeting these requirements? You have high reliability control for autonomous vehicle like the, the electric car that was produced by the, what's the name of the company in Turkey that produced the electric car. For that electric car to work autonomously without a driver you need sensors. These sensors need to be well connected with the wireless. Yes, and you need to design them in such a way that you avoid accidents, you make it safe to drive, you make the, your, your customer happy, not complaining about any problems. You have the robotics area, the energy and the smart grid. We call it the renewable energy, the medical facilities, the aviation and the drones and UAVs, industrial automation, all require high reliability. High reliability means lower error rates. And lower latency, quickly you can send your message and receive it, and higher availability. So these are the different use cases and different applications and whether they can be served with the current technology or they require new other technologies that can meet these demands. So this diagram explains and summarizes the different use cases and their requirement. For example, for high reliability control, you need stronger security, higher reliability, lower latency and frequency user mobility. This is for the high reliability control, which is this. These applications require these features. And therefore, you need to come up with technologies that can meet these demands. And wide area Internet of Things, which is the massive machine type communication, it requires high density, lower complexity, lower energy, deeper coverage, and so on and so forth. And the enhanced mobile broadband requires enhanced capacity, enhanced data rate, and better awareness. So this is basically the difference between the requirements of two use cases, the massive Internet of Thing and the critical Internet of Thing. When you hear the massive Internet of Thing, you think of these applications, yes? Smart building, logistics, network, smart agriculture, smart metering. This is massive Internet of Thing. Critical Internet of Thing, it's this. Healthcare, traffic safety, smart grid, industrial application, and control and remote manufacturing. Now, each one of these categories has its own requirements. What are the requirements of massive Internet of Things? Low cost, low energy, low, small data rate volume, massive number of devices connected to the network at the same time, and we want to serve all of them and make all of them happy. What are the requirements of a critical Internet of Things? Ultra reliable, very low latency, and very high availability. How do you serve them? How do you serve them? The techniques are, that are capable of serving this cannot be applied directly to this or to this category. You need to modify them, adjust them, so that or come up with a new ones. So the overall ecosystem, the overall consideration that you need to take into account while while you are building your Internet of Things project is. You have technical requirements, commercial requirements, and ecosystem. You want to meet all, you have to meet all these things, the like coverage, latency, robot, enhanced efficiency, and in terms of commercial, quality of service, security, cost, scalability. And in terms of ecosystem, you need to be able to have 
valid evidence that your application can work and can meet the requirements and the use cases and the demands of the future applications so that you can benefit your industry in the best manner possible. Again, these applications, we already talked about them and their requirements. Uh, now the technologies that's available in the market to be able to serve these use cases. You have Sigfox. Anybody heard of Sigfox? Sigfox enables you to build Internet of Things application to, uh, to, the, to, these, to these applications. Narrowband Internet of Things, another technology. LoRa, another technology which is cheap. Wi-Fi Haloa is another technology. Bluetooth, Bluetooth Low Energy, another technology. Wireless Mesh, 5G message type communication. These are different technologies that were invented in order to meet the requirements of the different Internet of Things application, whether a critical Internet of Things or massive Internet of Things. Now, what are the differences between them? You come to this curve. The differences in terms of quality of service, cost, adaptability, global. The lowest cost is Sigfox and LoRa. The best in terms of quality, 5G. The best in terms of adaptability to local requirements, mesh solutions. So, based on your requirements, you decide which one should I use. Yes? Now, which one are you going to use among all these things? I have a student who chose to work with LoRa. He built a transmitter and receiver that can talk over three kilometer distance. You can use Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi Hello. This, this is embedded with ESP chip Wi-Fi. You can take the, wi the chip and start building your application immediately. So basically, these are the. This is related to your project. Yes, everybody with me. Everybody with me. Everybody with me. These are related to your project. You need to choose your application in such a way that it's related to one of these areas, and you try to solve a problem that your customers, your family, your home, your whatever, they complain about. Once you hear someone complains about something, try to come up with a solution that uses the technology in order to solve the problem. So you have virtual reality, augmented reality, uh, extended reality, robotics factory, autonomous driving, drones, telemedicine. This is just a few examples. You have infinity number of examples where you can go. Basically, you have many opportunities to build amazing applications that can make business model for you and can generate revenue for you. What you need to do is to develop a new service and a new innovative user experience, enhance the productivity and efficiency. Something you think it's tedious takes too much time, it's not efficient. Improve real-time decision-making, solve the critical societal problems. So one of these, you want to focus, you have to focus on one of these things and try to come up with a good solution that can address a certain problem you see in your society. So there are many topics related to Internet of Things in terms of privacy, data protection, big data, network security, device security, health, smart home, business to business, and layers that covers the application, the data storage, the network, the communication, the hardware, all these things you are going to deal with in your project. And as soon as you get your chip, ESB, whatever, ESP88, based on your application. First, before you buy your chip, before you decide, you need to think of what will your project be and discuss it with me or send half-page description of what will you do so that we agree on it and then after that, within this week, and after that, you start working on it so that by 9th of April, you submit your first project. 
And with this, we conclude our lecture and stop here and we continue next time. Thank you very much.